Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this YouTube fly tying tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you a pattern that is very fast to tie and effective to fish, known as the foam wing midge. Stay tuned. Let's start tying this pattern. In my Staunfield Cayman Vice, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. This is their N304 and it's a size 18. Now if that sounds a little large for a midge fly, just bear with me for a second. Because this hook actually has a shorter shank, which basically means the portion of the hook in which you're going to be tying the body is shorter than the average hook at that size. The other great thing is that it has a wider gap too. So when you put all that stuff together, you're basically able to tie a size 20 or 22 fly on a hook that has the holding power of a size 16. That's something really important and something that, to take into consideration when you're tying midges, which is one of the main reasons why I tie a lot of them on this hook. Well, let's start tying this midge. We have very few materials. First, I'm gonna be using some gray thread. It's ADOT Uni-Thread. I'm gonna establish a base. But what I want to point out is that you'll notice that I started about one hook eye back. So I left that front portion without any thread on it. And that's something that I really believe is important. And you'll see why as I finish the fly. Next, let's talk a little bit about hackle for tailing. Now the majority of midges out there, at least the ones that, that I come into contact with and that, that I see on the rivers and streams that I fish, they don't have tails. Now, with that said, the majority of midges that I tie for my box, I place tails on because they've really worked for me over the years. I can't entirely explain why. Perhaps it's because uh, some of their legs may extend past their body. Maybe they take it as an emerger because that's the trailing shuck and it looks very similar to that shuck extending past the body. Now, I don't have a really solid explanation, but I can tell you that my midge patterns typically will have tailing fibers and I prefer it that way. Now, if you're not sure if you want to add the tailing fibers or not, my suggestion would always be to include them. And if you don't seem like you're catching fish on that pattern, it could be because of the tail. Trim them off and see if you then have success with the pattern. So for these ones, I'm just going to be selecting hackle from a done neck. It's a larger hackle. I'm going to tear about six or eight of these off. Line them up. Have them extend just a little bit past the bend. Lock them in place. And then I'm going to clip away the butt ends. Next, we're going to start to establish our body. So I'll be wrapping back. I want to make sure I'm placing touching wraps as I go back. And as I near the end of this, what I want to do is take my right hand, pick up the tailing fibers, and place a wrap below them to help splay all of them away. Next, I'm gonna wrap forward. Again, leaving that front portion open. Then I'm gonna wrap back again. About 75% of the way. And then come forward. Beginning to taper the body. Go back about 50% of the way. And then back forward. We've now just created a, a fine tapered body. At this point, there are some tires who want to go back and they'll go back actually the entire way once to just build up the body a little bit and to smooth off the tapering. If you do that, make sure that you do it and that you try your darndest to ensure that your wraps are touching that entire way back. Now we're going to add the final piece, and that's the wing. For this, I'm just going to be using some very simple white foam. I have it cut directly from the sheet, but I'm not going to tie it in just like that. I want to just reduce a little bit of this foam. So what I'm going to do is just cut all the edges down, just a hair. So I'm creating almost a pencil tip, but not a very sharp point, as you can see. Whoa. I'm going to place that directly over that portion that I really wasn't tying on before. 
so I can lock it directly there. I'll wrap forward, and now I'm going to wrap back to really ensure that I have this foam secure. At this point, you should be able to give it a tug, and it shouldn't come out. Then you can wrap back forward, and before I tie off, I'm just going to look at the fly from underneath, make sure everything looks good, and by that I, I mean I'm making sure that all those wraps are touching and that there's no white showing. I can move into the whip finish. Trim my thread away. And now all we have remaining is this wing. Now I prefer the wing to go back a little bit less than the body length. So somewhere around right there. There is really not a lot of wing extending off the top of this fly. So keep that in mind. If you really have trouble seeing flies on the water, you may want to leave it a little bit longer. But in my case, this is a pattern that I tend to fish about 20 feet away from me, and that's more than enough foam to see this pattern on the water. Let me just give you a nice 360 of the fly. And hopefully you can tell this was a really simple one to tie, and it's a great one to fish. So now I'm going to move into the last portion of this video and tell you a little bit more about this foamed wing midge. Now that I'm finished tying this foam winged midge, let's talk a little bit more about the pattern. For starters, for all of you fly tires out there, don't be afraid to experiment and show off some creativity with this fly. Don't be afraid to change the tailing fibers, the body, even the wing. I can tell you that on early variations, I had changed the wing around quite a bit. I used to go with more fluorescent colors, though I don't believe those are needed anymore. Also, the wing can be very fragile. In, in fact, I was recently fishing this pattern and the wing will frequently just be bitten off by fish after you've caught a number on this pattern. So on some early variations of the fly, I would actually bind the wing down at the rear of the hook, bring my thread forward to the eye, and then bind the wing down again to make almost a comparadon style body over it. But whenever I started looking at the fly, it was really taking away from what I was trying to achieve with the profile. And I like that wing coming up a little bit, slanted to kind of give off an emerger look for the midge. But if you have any variations you're trying, by all means, go for it and try them on the water. Well, speaking about on the water, that's one thing I really want to mention with this fly. I don't carry a bunch of this pattern in my box because I really don't think there's a need for them. In fact, I only carry it in three colors, basically light, medium, and dark. Cream, gray, and black. And I only carry each color in that one size that you, you saw during the video. I just don't feel that there's a need to carry a bunch of different sizes of this pattern. The fish are either going to take it or they're not. Now, let's talk a little bit more about when I fish this pattern because that's really important. This is a smaller fly. It's not the smallest midge that I carry by any means, but it's one of those patterns that can be tough to see on the water. And there's a couple different ways that I fish it. Sometimes I'll tie on a larger fly, maybe something like a humpy, maybe a larger parachute, and then I'll attach around eight inches of 6X or 5X monofilament to the bend of that hook and I'll tie on this pattern. That way if I'm fishing this further across the river or stream, I can kind of use that parachute fly as my guide and then have an idea of exactly where the midge is. However, I really don't like to do that because I kind of feel like that larger pattern will kind of take away from what I'm trying to achieve because the fish may not always see that style of fly on the water, especially when midges are present. So this is a fly that I really like to fish whenever I know A, the fish are taking midges and B, I can get close to the fish. That way I can make a cast and I'm able to see that little white foam wing on the water. If I'm able to pick that out, see how it's drifting, then I feel like I'm going to be a lot more successful with this pattern than not. So keep that in mind. Now I consider this part of my two minute tying series because it's a simple and effective fly to fish. Does that mean it's a guide fly? In my opinion, or at least on the waters I fish, it's not because this isn't a fly that I use all year round. It might be something that I'll use occasionally in June, July, maybe August, but it's not a fly that I'm going to be turning to on a consistent basis. So it's absolutely fast. It's effective to tie. It will qualify as a two minute fly easily. However, guide fly, I would probably rethink that unless I, I'm fishing midge hatches a lot. And if you are, then this would definitely categorize as a guide fly in your book. 
Well, with all that said, I hope you did enjoy this video for this foam wing midge. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. And I'd really love to hear from all of you that fish midge patterns on a regular basis, and I'd love to know what some of the patterns that you find effective to be are. If you could just leave those in the comments section below, because I'd love to read up on some of the current midge patterns that are being fished around the country. If you enjoyed this fly tying tutorial and you'd like to watch more related to fly tying and fly fishing, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page, and if you like that, you'll receive some occasional updates related to fly fishing and fly tying. Well, once again, thank you so much for viewing this video, and I hope you enjoyed the tying and learning a little bit about the pattern that I call the foam wing midge.